So now we're going to actually take a little bit of a dive into how do we actually get these complex machines in a delicate equation to actually get us into space. Yes, we're going to talk about the actual engineering. In this course, we're going to talk about many cool things like space law and space medicine. Um, but none of this is space economy. None of this is worth a bean unless we can actually get into space in the first place. That's right. So while in fact most of the space economy is not spent on launching into space, this is the, the sine qua non. Without That's this, right. nothing else can happen in exactly. space. Exactly. And as we just saw, it's almost impossible. We need such a big delta V that getting into space at all, let alone getting anywhere interesting and doing anything with there with any reasonable weight, is nightmarish. And you know, we we're trying to cut every little gram of weight and maximize every uh, increase in speed just to get us to the different places and carry the different weights and payloads into space. Yep. Now, as we talked about last time, the way we, we do it is by firing something backwards. Um, so we're going to need two things. We're going to need energy yep. to give our throw speed, and we're going to need something to throw. That's right. Now, they could come from different things. They could be an astronaut with their muscles throwing bricks out the back. I thought you were going to say throwing astronauts out the back. I'm glad you were throwing rocks. Or practically, you might, for example, have a nuclear reactor which yep. provides the energy, which then fires some inert gas out the back. That's right. Or you presumably, you could put a mass driver on an asteroid and pick up rocks and fire them out the back. Yep. So you could actually use rocks with a solar-powered mass driver or something like this. But in pr and this is used for ion drives yes. and could potentially be used for nuclear engines. That's right. But for 99% you know, of the time, we're using chemical propulsion. Yep. And that means the same fuel does both. First of all, it contains the energy. And you set fire to it, you burn it. And that provides the energy. And then you're also using the exhaust out as you're throwing out. So it's a dual purpose. It's That's right. A, an energy source, and B, a lump of mass we can throw out. And one that we kind of can do right now. That's the other trick. That's right. And that's how most of every, well, in fact, every launch yeah. to space has used this. I don't think there's any other technique that's been used Not yet. Not right now. Um, and uh, they do use ion drives occasionally for in-space repulsion. But even yes. in-space repulsion is mostly rockets. That's right. So here's our equation, the rocket equation again. So this is telling us what we really need from our rocket here. Yep. Delta V we can't change because that's fixed by the laws of gravity and so on. If you can repeal those, that would be great. <laughs> um, so what you're going to want is you want to have our highest possible exhaust velocity. So this is our, our, our best fuel, most efficient engines yep. to generate that. So we want that gas to be squared at the back as fast as we possibly can. But we also have to worry about the mass. That's right. In particular, we're going to have a limited amount of dry mass, and that's got to include our payload and our rocket engines and our tanks fuel tanks. and everything that goes into it, the nuts and bolts in between. So having a really high VE is not going to help us, and that requires a very heavy rocket and very heavy fuel tanks to that's do right. it. Because then, sure, we can uh, get a better ratio, mass ratio, but that's all going to be used up by the mass of all our fuel tanks and everything else. Yes, that's right. And this is, this is in some sense, why rocket science is hard. You need to get a very high velocity, but also you need to do it with almost no mass in terms of rockets and fuel tanks and the like. That's right. So it's a very, it's a formidable challenge.